Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and this week on the Flicks of the Week, Natalie Portman does something, my wife's favorite flick, and no, that is not what it sounds like. Jim Carrey goes super dark, Dennis Hopper fucks anything that moves, and Doctor Who is a total prick. So if you're new here, the Flicks of the Week are where I give you all my top picks from all the major streaming services, so you're gonna get multiple movie picks from all the major services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO, Star, Showtime. Sometimes I mix some others in. I do this every single week, so be sure to click the subscribe button if you like getting constant movie recommendations. But starting this list off, Blue Velvet just got added to Hulu. Now this is a David Lynch movie. If you're not sure whether or not you like David Lynch movies, uh, Blue Velvet could be a decent place to start. His work is very odd. It's fairly surreal. Uh, he's done movies like Mulholland Drive, which I think is his best, uh, Lost Highway, Eraserhead, all very, very weird movies. David Lynch is also famous for doing Twin Peaks. To me, Blue Velvet is the closest in tone to Twin Peaks. So if you were a fan of that show and you never could get into any of his other movies, you might dig this one. Lynch is not for everybody, but I would imagine a lot of my subscribers like Lynch. And if you don't, you might like this movie. For a pick that almost everybody loves universally, and deservedly so, Tombstone. Now, is Tombstone the best Western ever made? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think there are some that top it. It is certainly very good, but I consider it to be like the most accessible and the most loved across like all audiences. Interesting fact about this one is the director was actually like fired and let go or quit about halfway through production, and Kurt Russell, rumoredly, Kurt Russell actually sort of like rallied the troops and finished as the director. Now, he's not credited with this, and he never went on to direct anything else ever again. If you've never seen it, I, you almost have to as like a rite of passage just to even figure out whether or not you like it, but I'm pretty sure that you will. To knock out some of the movie channels, HBO just added The Book of Eli. Now, this is directed by the Hughes brothers, who a long time ago directed a couple of really good movies called Menace to Society and Dead Presidents. Uh, they did a couple of others, but they took a really long break, and then they did this post-apocalyptic movie with Denzel Washington. I really liked it a lot. Gary Oldman's great. Tom Waits makes a little of an appearance. I, I love Tom Waits. Love Denzel. I, I really like everything about this movie. It just felt a little bit too safe. Not quite as edgy as I wanted it to be, although it is fairly edgy. Some of you are going to think I'm ridiculous for saying that. However, just talking about Tombstone... The post-apocalyptic is very much a modern-day Western. You know, the hero strolls into town. It, it's almost like a Dust Bowl type of a, uh, an era. Uh, feels very, very much like a Western. It's built like a Western. It's told like a Western. If you never saw this one, I recommend checking it out. It's well worth the watch on HBO right now. I mentioned my wife's favorite movie is going to be mentioned on this video. But I, I, she may not admit to this, but Inception is definitely her favorite movie. And I'm not picking on her for that. I love Inception. It's one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies. One of. Uh, it's maybe behind Dark Knight, a Memento. Yeah, maybe behind Dark Knight and Memento. But it's really, really great. It kind of got made fun of a little bit because it, it, it is fairly heavy-handed with some of its themes. But I love everything about it. The, the music by Hans Zimmer is amazing, the cast is amazing, the story's just so unique. If you're one of those people that likes to complain about Hollywood turning out the same thing over and over and over again, you're, you're correct, but Inception is a great example of, of Hollywood doing something different with a big budget. We don't get that a lot. A lot of big budgets are dedicated to franchises like superhero movies. This one's something different. I would have loved to see more in this universe, but I'm happy with that movie being standalone as it is. And speaking of my wife, there is a good chance, a good, I'll go ahead and say a good chance, that she may be appearing on the Flick Connection podcast soon. If you didn't know how to podcast, there is a link to that in the description. You can go ahead and subscribe to that channel, click the bell, and you'll get notified when new videos come out, like the one with my wife, sometime in upcoming weeks. Shudder is a really cool streaming service I know a lot of you already use. It's all horror and thriller. They just added Mandy as they like co-produced Mandy. Uh, they, they were involved with the production. It's the only place you can currently watch Mandy unless you buy it or rent it. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. And I'll tell you, the first time I saw it, I liked it. And I knew I would like it. I knew just by the trailer, even if it was bad, I was going to enjoy the experience like cinematically. And I did. 
but I thought it was a little overwrought and a little bit too much and, and a little bit of kind of full of itself and a little full of bullshit, to be honest with you. On a second and third viewing, that's right, I've seen it that many times so far, uh, twice in the theater. Uh, I love the movie more every time. I understand what the director, Panos Cosmatos, is doing, what he's trying to do. Not all of it yet, but I'm getting more and more of it. And it it's less self-indulgent than I thought it was. And it really is, I think, going to become a cult classic. I think it's already well on the way to that status. If you love movies like that, cult movies, grungy, dirty, nasty movies, uh, Mandy is a lot of fun. And, and it's super dark. Don't go into this thinking that it's just going to be like hilarious and fun. It's not. It is extremely dark. On that note, though, I actually created a playlist for Mandy uh, several months back when the movie released. It was just music that I thought paired nicely with the movie. So well, in fact, it's got well over a thousand followers on uh, Spotify. If you're interested to hear what I put together, uh, there's a link to that in the description and probably the top of the comments. So check that out if you use Spotify. It's free to listen to the playlist. Uh, it's just something I kind of curated uh, for my audience. Now, Jim Carrey starred in a movie this year called Dark Crimes. And not only did it not look good, it got horrific ratings and really just flew in under the radar. It's currently available on Stars. I have not had time to watch it because I'm too busy recommending watching movies that I want to recommend to you. However, I'm mentioning it on this video because if you want to watch just a bad decision on Jim Carrey's part from what it sounds like, uh, I'm going to be giving it a look sometime soon just out of pure curiosity. Uh, I know some of you, I'm sure there's one or two of you out there that will do the same, but since it's just a few, I'll move on. To make up for that bad recommendation, uh, Oscar-nominated short films from 2018 are also added to stars. Now, this is a great way to see short films. Uh, there are plenty of short films on YouTube. In fact, I do plan on putting together a list of recommendations for ones you can currently watch on YouTube at some point. Uh, but it's hard to find the Oscar-nominated ones outside of the collection of them. So I'll be checking it out. I know there were a few that I missed last year. And shorts are always a great way to see uh, new talent, and a lot of times the the shorts that get nominated, those directors and creators end up going on to do full-length features in the following years. So just another good reason to sort of watch those when you have the time. Before we get on to the top picks of the week, if you want to support the show, you can do so in a number of ways. Uh, you can support me on Patreon, or you can buy one of these sick shirts that I designed myself. Uh, if you become a Patreon supporter, though, uh, you could get a free t-shirt depending on what tier you pick, but you can become a supporter for as little as $1 a month. Links to all of this in the description below. Now, in theaters, it is another slow week, but there is a movie that has my interest. It's called Vox Lux. Now, this is directed by a fairly young actor who that I've seen in a few things. This is his first movie, but Natalie Portman stars in it as like a pop star, and it looks kind of cool. Like, none of, none of what I just described sounds like me, but the movie looks cool. I definitely think it's going to be worth giving it a look. Not yet sure if I'll do it in the theater, but honestly, there's really nothing else coming out this week. And for some odd reason, I don't know, I know it's the holidays, but it's a dead week in the theater, because that movie's not even going to come out everywhere. The, the roster is stacked next week. So on Flicks of the Week next week, I'll be talking about all the major releases that next week. Now, on to the stuff you came here for. On Amazon Prime, there is a movie called Bad Samaritan starring David Tennant, who most famously played Doctor Who for a period of time. And some people claim he's their favorite Doctor Who. Of course, everybody has a different favorite Doctor Who. Anyway, uh, he's a bad dude in this one, so no spoilers uh, because this is all given to you in the trailer, but uh, some thieves try to steal from his house. They find that he has a girl chained up there. They then try to figure out how do they help her without incriminating themselves. He then gets on their trail and then decides to start manipulating them, and it's this really kind of cool story. Uh, it's a fairly small movie, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's pretty sick and twisted. Uh, David Tennant's great. The other cast members are pretty good. Uh, I had a good time with it. It is a really good pick for a fairly new release that's available on Amazon Prime right now. For something far from a new release, Logan's Run 
has been added to Amazon Prime. Last week, I talked about Friday After Next being sort of my white whale, like a movie I could never get my hands on. I could also never get my hands on a copy of Logan's Run until last week when I finally got to watch it. Now, Logan's Run uh, is about a, a far, far future where the world's population has been decimated and everyone lives in this like bubble-covered city and it's a utopia. It's just everything's perfect, but at the age of 30, you essentially have to sacrifice yourself and you get to see all that in the movie. And Logan's Run is about a, a guy who catches runners uh, they decide to run before their sacrificial day, uh, and he sort of goes on the run. So I won't say much more than that, but it's a really cool 70s, trippy, uh, futuristic thing, funny-looking costumes and everything, but several directors have been trying to get this remade for a long time. It, it should be, just so that it's updated and a new audience can enjoy it, but... If you don't have a problem looking at something through the proper lens so you can watch an older movie and appreciate it for how it was made in the day or even just sort of enjoy some of the campiness, Logan's Run is a great watch. Now, I mentioned these two on last week's Netflix video, so apologies to regular viewers, but they really are two of my favorite movies. They just got added to Netflix, so I needed to make them a part of this week's Flicks of the Week, but The Big Lebowski just got added. I love everything about this movie. In fact, I have quite a bit of movie artwork and memorabilia in this room. The only one you ever see on my videos is the, is this your homework hand-drawn piece that I'm very, very proud of. Is this your homework, Larry? Ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is that your car out front? Is this your homework, Larry? We, we know it's his fucking homework. I just love everything about this movie. There are things I don't like, but the, I love everything else so much, I could just re-watch this one. In fact, I do. I probably watch this one once a year. It's one of those you can pick up in the middle and enjoy it. You can sit down and dedicate the full two hours to it and enjoy it. It's got great lines in it. If you're a fan of the Coen brothers at all, I would imagine this one's up there. If not your top, I imagine it's at least like top three or four. Uh, it is for me. If you never saw it, if you're a fan of my recommendations, rarely do I push for you to watch something in particular. I would push for you to watch The Big Lebowski. Even if you don't like it, come back and let me know. Uh, I, I just, I feel like everyone likes The Big Lebowski. Am I wrong? And then District 9, which I consider to be one of the best sci-fi movies to have come out this century. Uh, I really, really love this movie. It was shot for $30 million, which if you know anything about movie finances, you never get anything close to the production level of District 9 for less than 100 million, typically more like 150, to get a movie that looks this good. It's creative, it's fun, it's got great performances, it's got great social commentary, it's got great effects. Again, I'm not just gushing because it is a low budget, but it is so impressive. But everything else is just so good and it's thrilling. I enjoy going on this journey. I wish we got a sequel. I don't know that that will ever happen. Let me know in the comments section what movies from this list you'll be watching this week. But I will keep making videos just like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this episode and you will see me on the next one.